بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وبعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته My dear brothers and sisters Now wudu is one of the most beautiful acts of ibadah that we as Muslims we perform every single day The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us that before we perform our salah we are required to be in a state of purification to be in a state of wudu Moreover Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran O oh, you who have believed, if you stand for prayer, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the procedure in how we purify ourselves for salah. So as wudu is an act of ibadah, it's an act of worship, we start with an intention, a niyyah. And the intention is not something that is verbal or it is said, but the intention is, as the ulama, they said, it is mahalluhu al-qalb, that its placement is in the heart was the practice of the Prophet وسلم, after one made the, makes their intention is to wash their hands and this is done simply by what have if you have a tap or if you have a bucket or whatever means you are drawing when using the water is to have the water you know run between your hands after your hands are clean then you pick up the water with your right hand and you are now going to wash and rinse your nose and your mouth. The rinsing of the mouth in Arabic is called al madmada and madmada requires that you swish the water around and then you spit it out. And then there is the action of inhaling the water ever so slightly and then blowing it out with your left hand. After you've done that, you're now going to wash your face. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَغَسِيلُوا وَجُوهَكُمْ Wash your faces. You get the water in your hands and then you bring it up to your face ensuring that we know what the face is and this starts from where the hair would usually grow where it starts from down to the bottom of what you can see of the chin not underneath and then from one ear lobe to the next after you have done your face you are then going to then wash your hands up to and including your elbow so you wash your hands, ensuring you take the water and you can allow the water to run down your hand and ensure that the water is all over your hand, your upper arm, including your elbow. You do this with your right side and then you do the same for your left. Now with your head, you are only required to wipe it and not wash it. Therefore, when you take some water for your head, you're not going to cup an amount of water rather to wet your hands under the tap or in whatever vessel you're taking from to have your hands wet and to start from the forelock here and to move your hands all the way to the back okay ensuring that the hands as much as you can cover the head and it is also the practice of the prophet وسلم, to then bring your hands back to the front if you did it from here just to the back that would be sufficient this is the wiping of the head after you have done that it was the practice of the Prophet وسلم, to use whatever water was remaining on the hands to then put your fingers and your thumb in the ear and not to take new water. So the Prophet وسلم, would use his index finger and his thumb and the thumb would be used to wipe the back of the ear and the fingers would be used to wipe the insides of all the crevices. After this we go to the final part of the wudu and that is to wash one's feet. And that is to ensure that water reaches all parts of the foot, starting with the right. The Prophet ﷺ would also, and it is recommended for you to ensure that the water is and it goes between the toes. So if you use your finger, and some of the ulama mentioned you can use your small finger, to go between your toes to ensure that water reaches between all the toes, that the whole foot is then washed. Be careful not to waste water if you have a tap not to leave that tap on the fullest, that the water is you know, flowing away like this. So be careful not to waste any water. It was also the practice of the Prophet وسلم, to say, Allahumma ja'alni min al-tawwabeen wa ja'alni min al-mutatahhirin. Oh Allah, make me from those who frequently repent and make me from those who are, those who are purified. As Bilal radiallahu an, he used to do that after performing the wudu, he would perform two rak'ah. And this is something that many people forget and it is a well-known sunnah, authenticated sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ that after you perform wudu, that you can perform two raka'ah after that.
It was also authenticated that the Prophet ﷺ recommended the use of the miswak at the time of wudu. So when a person is about to do the madmada, and that is the cleaning and rinsing of the mouth, they once use the tooth stick to swish around in the mouth to ensure that the mouth inshallah ta'ala is pure when a person is going to pray inshallah ta'ala. It was also recommended that the Prophet ﷺ told us to use the miswak just about we are about to pray as well inshallah ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to beautify our worship in order to be rewarded by Allah Jalla wa'ala. Barakallahu feekum. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.